The Legend of Korra Season 3 Episode 7 we're doing today. You know, at the time of recording this video, I just posted, like just a day or two ago, I posted the um, Legend of Korra Season 3 Episode 1 to my YouTube channel. Uh, so, on my Patreon account, we're on Episode 7. So, um, so, I mean, it just makes me think, like, wow. I, I'm watching, like, you know, I'm only just posting the start of Season 3 on my channel and we're already halfway through it on my Patreon account. Um, I'm not saying that to advertise my Patreon account, although I am advertising it at the same time. Um, I'm saying that because that's really how fast I'm going through this season. Like, I, the, I ramped up some of the video postings on uh, for Season 3 just because... I'm having so much fun and uh, also the comments on the first episode of season three on my YouTube channel were very kind and everyone was extremely excited for me to go through season three and it's fun watching reading all those comments now having seen uh, so much of season three, you know, because I'm like sort of relating to them where they're like, oh, you're gonna love some of the stuff I'm coming and I'm like, I know I do love it and I've already seen it, but it's amazing, you know, and also it's funny when people were like sort of debunking a couple of the theories that I had in that first episode that I completely forgot that I had. You know, like I had a theory that I, which I had forgotten about until someone commented about it. I had a theory that Zaheer was originally a bender and got his bending taken away by Aang. Um, a theory which I no longer believe and I didn't believe past the first episode. But it's kind of interesting. <laughs> kind of an interesting theory I came up with and I completely forgot about it by the time I filmed episode 2. So insane anyway uh we're doing season three episode seven of legend of Korra today um last time i think at the end of the episodes the here was like i know where they are like didn't he meditate and he was like i got it i figured out where they are so uh yeah i think maybe zaheer might be coming for them i mean it also might take i don't know what their transportation methods are i don't know if they have any major like because they, they were they had to escape the city on like a stolen truck and stuff I don't know if it's going to be easy for them to get all the way to Ba Sing Se. Is that where we still are? Are we still in Ba Sing Se? Wait, no, where are we? Hang on. I no, no, because we, no, we aren't. Because we went to um the place with the people, <laughs> which I've forgotten the name of, of that place because it was kind of a, a tricky name to remember. Um, it was Zhao Fu. We were in Zhao Fu, but I think, didn't we say we're going to go back to the air temple now? But if that's the case, Zaheer and shit just left? I don't know. Maybe they're going to meet halfway? Goddamn. I don't know. Let's jump into the episode and find out. We'll probably get the answers by watching the episode. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, support the video if you can. Liking, commenting, and subscribing. The comments are amazing. Keep them coming. Make sure to continue to comment down below. And, um, and if you like my stuff, i got lots of videos out on my channel. And I've got a Patreon account if you want the full-length reaction, as well as early access, which means you can get the next, you know, six episodes or something on my Patreon account right now. You can pretty much finish the season of Season 3. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can finish it on my Patreon account right now, I think. So anyway, let's jump into it. This is Season 3, Episode 7 of The Legend of Korra. Okay. It didn't mention anything about Zaheer there. Maybe we won't have Zaheer this episode. Instead, he simply meditated, getting his nourishment from the universe. Yeah, everyone's bored because no one so, cares about the culture. Completed the Not no one. Someone day does. Of his historic fast. Anyone besides Otaku who already studied o this? In is his, his name Otaku? Ooh, ooh. And is answering every question? Ooh, no way. Ooh. Is his name Otaku? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was cute. Tends and hates it, but it's cute. How you like me now, motherfuckers? Now let's get back to our lessons. Dad! We brought you more airbenders! Woo, yeah! We had a little scare, but everything is okay. Zahir infiltrated the air temple. Mm -hmm. what? That's a bit more is than a little right? scare. Everyone's fine. Remember that long, boring story about the guy who never ate? Yes, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Avatar Korra is calling on the temple radio. She'll be headed your way soon. Really? That's wonderful. She is wonderful. Aww. And pretty and so smart. And she smells like flowers. <laughs> I like how both Cora and Tenzin Laura. have that fed up look. You need to give yourself a break. Let Janora and the kids help you out. 
And what about yeah. Umi? He was a naval commander. Look how cute Maybe she he is. Maybe some ideas about how to get people motivated. <laughs> Umi. Taking more responsibility by making him think the whole thing was his idea. And find the hmm. things they like about the air culture. Sure sounds like a good plan. Conflict resolution. It's what I do. Oh, that's adorable. Alright, oh no. I think Kai might be a bad influence on Janora, but. Let Janora have some fun. How come they're all on the ground? Airbus and calves can't oh, fly they're the wrestling. after they're born. Careful. Oh, Janora, grab him. Yes, good job. Well, I guess cool is just something you're born with. Boomy, can I talk to you? Oh man, they, they really don't like Tenzin. Something. Help me be more like you. I'd love to. Okay. You gotta use break them down so you can build them back up. Really? Rule with an iron fist. Show them who the master is. I kind of didn't expect that. Thanks for the insight. My pleasure. Huh. <laughs> he's all about goofing off, but he says rule with an iron fist. I'm going to break you down and build you back up. Now get moving, recruit. <laughs> I mean, you didn't expect this, Boomy? It's literally what you said. Airbenders are able to warm themselves with only their breathing. Everyone get into the lotus position. Oh, this is so much oh, more refreshing man. than sleep. They're going to hate you know, Tenzin even more. That thing about an iron fist. I mean, this, one, this one's on Boomy. He gave bad advice. <laughs> to maintain your heaven and earth connection. Whoa, that's pretty cool. It's not hard if you concentrate. It's a pretty cool uh, technique for an airbender. Ignore the lemurs digging in your ears. <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of lemurs. When the head is shaved, oh, the they're shaving their head. Feel the wind Aww. around him. It is both humbling and freeing. See, Janora cares right, about that. Next? I'm not Air bending sure stuff. She also wants to have fun. That's though. fine. Shaving your head is a personal choice. Wait, what? Obstacle <laughs> course. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. He found out it was optional after he shaved his head. No, yeah, Janora is the one you should be listening to. I think she has a good balance between caring about airbending and having fun. Kai's pretty good. Yeah, wow, Kai's very impressive. Aww. I think because Kai uses it for methods that he enjoys, so he practices it a lot. Everyone is waiting for you, Boomy! Oh, oh! Ow. Fine, quit! We don't need your attitude in the new air oh, nation. Oh no. Master Tenzin, so many other people are gonna quit when now. When do we get to go home and visit our families? I'm tired of all this complaining! Janora, take over. This is really Does sad. This mean, when do you think I can get my tattoos? What brought this on? <laughs> I was just talking to Kai. I'm not a little girl anymore. I can airbend just as yeah, well as you. Yeah, stand up for yourself, Janora. I know everything Janora. about our culture and history. Hiki, Milo, you're up. Just lead them through the Bagua circle. Oh, no, not these two. <laughs> 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 Where did all the spirits go? Where are the babies? Oh shit! Oh no! Must be living up at the temple. Who is this? Hurry up and gather the rest of the with the rest of the fresh meat. What? That taking them back to Bossing Say? No. <laughs> Umi ruins everything. Oh, it's hard for him to focus on meditation now, huh? It doesn't automatically make them air nomads. Yes, 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 yes. Tell me about it. First night, I was so scared and lonely, and the bed was so hard. It's actually better for your back. <laughs> Turn off, Tenzin. Is... Where's Janora? I saw her fly off on her glider with her boyfriend. What? Her boyfriend? <laughs> oh, no. Kai. Oh, no. How can you steal these bison? They're endangered. That's why oh, Janora so cares much. mostly about the bison. You're the queen in her I can't. I'm all cramped in here, and I need quiet and time to focus. Huh. But maybe I can send a message. Okay. I need your help. Okay, there we go. There's one. Go find Boomju. Face it, I'm just not cut out to be an airbender. Oh, <laughs> well, that's your opinion. 
Go get Tenzin and go. You were able to communicate with the spirits? More or less, I get the gist. Let's go. <laughs> Mr. Tenzin be dealing with this? Master Tenzin isn't here. It's up to us. Okay, all right. The class is going to rally together to save them. Move out. We haven't been training that long. That's not important now. Remember how we persevered together on yeah, the Boomy's obstacle course? Yeah, bringing them together. You actually quit. Oh, yeah, Kai. Down and twist. Wow, with twigs? Crazy. Hey, what are you doing out? Hell yeah! Go, ambush! Oh, oh no. Oh, he feels it! Hey! He's kind of in touch. In touch with the elements. Nice. I'm coming to Nora. Okay, alright, good. He sees her. But maybe instead he'll see Kai save her. And he'll respect Kai more. Woo! What the? <laughs> oh my god, being rammed by bison. And the bison are pissed because their children are there. I give up. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god. That's enough. But that was very good technique. <laughs> yeah, fair. Without my shaved head, I never could have dodged that net. That's I true. Really felt it coming at you me. felt it on the you back of your head. You totally get shaved. I never really felt like I was part of the Air Nation before. Mm -hmm. You are now. <laughs> and you were before. Like, not just because you're an airbender now. It's hard for me to believe that my little girl is grown up enough to have her tattoos. But? But I promise I'll think about it. Oh, we'll think uh, about it. Okay. Yeah. That's Tenora, fair. Look. Oh. Oh. What a sweet episode. Okay. Um. Wow. So, well, first thing I want to say. I often start this when I'm, whenever I'm looking at the um, the credits and uh, pick out things in the credits. So firstly, um, that character at the start's name was Otaku, which is very funny. The guy who is um, is kind of like a nerd about the culture and stuff, like actually, actually is kind of interested in the culture. They named Otaku. I think that's very funny. Um, and also. Gunbat, the, uh, I think the main, I'm pretty sure it was the main rustler, um, is voiced by Travis, Travis Willingham, which I love him. I'm a big Critical Role fan, so I love Travis. Um, but yeah, anyway, this episode, so we didn't get any Zaheer stuff. In fact, we didn't really get any Korra stuff other than that one adorable conversation. Um, but what we did get is focus on... Ow, I just kicked my ankle on something. Um, some focus on Tenzin and his teaching methods. And we're going into stuff... Like, I don't think the show is going to go in the direction that I am kind of... Like, that I had kind of speculated for it going and that I personally um, would take it in. Which is... The idea, but but I still think they're touching on the topics, which is good. It's the idea that the air nomads, um, and I'm rubbing my eyes a lot because I feel like I've got something in my eyes, like hay fever type stuff. Um, the air nomads are not around anymore, right? We know that. And it's like, even though there are airbenders now, we still don't have any more air nomads other than Tenzin. And the thing about the Air Nomads, in my opinion, I think it is like a very particular type of culture. Um, and it's a important culture. And I understand the desire to preserve that culture at any cost from Tenzin's perspective. With that being said, I don't think it's a culture that should be forced upon people. And I think that Tenzin should offer and encourage others to explore what they get out of airbending, you know? I think it's possible to learn 
about the uh, the culture of the Air Nation, while also not having to follow all of its principles. And I think, personally, I think that that should be the way that Tenzin takes this, you know? I am a mildly religious person. I've talked about this before. I, I'm not like super religious, but um, but if I was to define my religion, I would say I'm a Christian and leave it at that, you know? But I have very, very loose beliefs. I sort of pick and choose things that I believe. Um, but it basically just all comes down to, you know, I care about people. I think people should care about each other. And I really don't know, but possibly there's a higher power. That's kind of where it stops, right? The reason I bring that up is because my opinions on religion overall um, is a lot about freedom to believe in the things you want to believe, but also freedom to not believe in the things you want to believe. But ultimately, um, with non-harmful religions, to like understand them and to be okay with learning about them, even if it's not something you believe, because I think a lot of the time when you learn about other groups of people, it doesn't even have to be religion, you can like learn the things that they hold dear and that actually might help you be more in touch with anything, you know? Like if you take, um, you know, the ideas of meditation from, uh, what is meditation like, does meditation originate from Buddhism? I, in my mind it does, but I don't know if that's true. But like, let's just say for the sake of argument that comes from Buddhism, like you don't have to be Buddhist, but you can still take meditation from that because meditation is a very, um, a very great way to be in touch with yourself and, and be able to calm yourself and understand yourself more, you know? So it's something great you can take from that. So what I'm saying is I think Tenzin, yeah, should c continue to, uh, to teach these people about the Air Nation and and, um, and the things that they could uphold. But also, I think, I, I think he should accept the idea that these people are from their own cultures. They're from all these different places in the world and they have their own beliefs. They have their own things that they hold dear to them. So, like, you know, focus on that. Because I, I don't know. It, in my mind, I don't think airbending, like, uh, has to originate from that type of spirituality. I know I've said many times that airbending, in my mind, is inherently spiritual, but, like, I think spiritual can probably have a wide enough net that it's like, airbending is more about understanding yourself, maybe, you know, potentially. Uh, airbending is, is something that's so um inner where it's like earth bending i think is very physical like even if you're not necessarily muscly and stuff like toff wasn't jacked but um but she was very physical and so like when she was when toff was teaching ang like here you have to stop this boulder she was saying like you have to stand in the way of the boulder you have to be like present in front of the boulder and that's the only way you're gonna stop it so like earthbending is very much about like being there being physically being there just your body being a part of this movement you know earthbending techniques are a lot of like power you can see the way they're like really thrusting into it and stuff while airbending is more about um a little bit of finesse but also like it, it's it seems to be um reflective you know, in, in many senses of the word. I mean, sometimes you're literally re reflecting attacks, but other times, you know, you're understanding yourself, so you're using it to dodge, you're using it to counter, you're using it to, you know, um, move people around. Like, it's, it it is the sort of um, thing where you have to go with the flow. So when you're very spiritual, when you're very he heavily spiritual and you follow the Air Nation's traditions, I can see how that would assist your airbending because they have a very calm and understanding spirituality to them. But with that being said, I also think your airbending can come from anything else where you understand yourself and you learn to apply it in things that matter to you. So I think 
it should be for Tenzin just about finding whatever that is in each individual person and teaching them through that. And that's what is also going to make people like him more. Now the thing is, I feel like from the way that this episode concluded, that's not going to be the, what happens, that's not going to be the case. That's what I think. Because I kind of got the idea from this episode that, like, Tenzin just kind of has to be more patient and let other people come around to his way of thinking. Even though what I'm saying is I think Tenzin should come around to their way of thinking. I think I think the, the lesson that we got here is just for Tenzin to be able to wait more for everyone else, which, um, which is still good, and it's still good character development and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and I, I think that's just a, a different approach that, um, that I would probably take, but we're still halfway through this arc, so I am curious to see exactly where it takes it, and I'm, I'm very curious to see by the end of this show, like even by the end of season four, at that point, where are the airbenders up to? And are they going to be at a point where they, um, like, I don't know, are, are they going to be at a point where they're more like themselves, or are they going to be more like the Air Nation? Because I think their individuality could serve itself in an interesting way. Because I think also, when we're looking at this, and I know I'm talking a lot about like one topic, but I don't think I have that many topics to talk about. Um, also, I do think as a whole, from all the airbending we've seen, and we haven't seen that much, but from all the airbending we've seen, a lot of airbenders actually tend to be kind of samey. If you know what I mean? Like, when we watched, like, the flashbacks of Aang and all the other airbenders, like, they're all using the same air scooter, and they're all, like, um, using gliders, and they're all w with bison, and, like, they, they've, they're have they all doing the same techniques. And so because of that, like, airbenders actually don't have that much originality to them, and especially not now because they're all being taught by Tenzin. But Zaheer, and this is where I think the villain comes in in an interesting way, Zaheer seems to have more interesting ways of using his airbending. And, um, and he's a bit more exciting and dynamic with it, you know? So, like, I feel like it's once again maybe going to be a, a sort of situation of, like, the villain the villain's presence actually may be assisting something because Amon pointed out equalities within the world and even though he was wrong about a lot of the stuff he was doing, the equalities that he was pointing out were things that he should have pointed out. And Unalak pointed out the fact that we are disregarding the spirit world and keeping them basically locked away from us and even though he was wrong about a lot of the other stuff he was doing um, that is something that influenced us going forward, is now we're living with spirits because he was right about that. So, in the same way, I would totally understand if, if Zaheer was, I mean, like, I don't think this is Zaheer's thing, necessarily, but I would totally understand if Zaheer, like, made people see that there's, you can be a bit more original <laughs> with your airbending and you can have some more individuality, um, and, but without, you know, being part of the air nation or being rather an air nomad, but I don't know. I, I, I'm just kind of throwing little theories out there and we'll see what sticks by the end of the season. I don't think anything that I've said in this discussion, I like, I don't think this is my strongest discussion. I don't think anything I've said in this discussion has, is like super, um, like, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't imagine myself looking back and going, like, wow, I fucking nailed it, you know? Some other discussions, I think that does kind of happen, where I kind of, I, I'm kind of like, well, I really think my theories are on point right now, but these ones, I'm just kind of, this is kind of word vomit. Um, I do want to say, though, uh, Janora, I, I like Janora more and more every single time she's on screen, and... I appreciate that she stands up for herself a little bit in this, and I appreciate that she is so good at airbending, and she does care about the culture, but she also cares about 
like Kai and she cares about herself and she cares about having fun and she cares about bison and like she has a, a variety of interests and she um, also cares about the other airbenders there and wants to make sure that they're having a good time you know that they're not um, miserable she seems like the perfect teacher for them and it's really and the, the sad thing is like the more we see Tenzin try to do certain things, the more we find out that Janora is the one who's right for those things, which is really depressing for Tenzin. And I think that's something Tenzin is coming to terms with and like having to confront a lot in this series is like he raised Janora beautifully, but Janora is at a point where she is kind of just uh, awesome, you know, and she like I, I think he needs to step aside and let Janora be free and let Janora do the things he needs like let her help let her be an active part of it and not help in the same way that you like you know you give your your uh, brother your little brother a controller that's not plugged in you know not in that kind of help way which is kind of what I think that he's doing with Iki and uh the other child that I always forget the name of. <laughs> um, but, uh, but no, like, actually, you know, put her in charge. Because I do think she's at that point where she can take that responsibility. And she's an incredible airbender. And she's she relates to people. And she has fun with people. Let her spread her wings a bit. And give her her tattoos. She wants her tattoos, give it to her, you know? But, uh, but... When that happens, you know, Tenzin is kind of admitting, like, he isn't needed as much. Which is a very sad thing to admit, because he wants to be a major part in moulding the the new airbenders. He wants, I think he does genuinely want to be one of the major uh, people who passed on Aang's legacy. And if it's not him, and it's Chinora, I do think he'd be sad and kind of jealous. And I understand that. that it, it sucks. But I think he also should be proud of that and say, well, that's my daughter. You know, like I, I, I raised her. It's because of me. Like, oh, you know, also because of her and because of Pamela and stuff. But partially because of me that she's the person she is today. And so in a way, he is passing on Aang's legacy. He passed it on to Janora and she passes it on to the next day of Avengers. But, um, yeah, he just, he has to take a step back, I think, personally. But we'll see. We'll see how this plays out. Um, I'm giving advice to fictional characters who whose uh, actions were written many, many years ago. <laughs> so uh, I guess we'll find out. But I love family dynamics. And, like, as you can see, I got kind of emotion, like, just a little bit emotional there while talking about that because it's a it's a theme that I really like. It's a theme that I've explored in D&D quite a bit when I play characters in D&D. I like exploring family dynamics. I do it a lot with my character Tywin Shawshot that I play um, on a YouTube channel called Dice Dice Revolution. You can look it up if you want. We play D&D every Sunday and my character in that Tywin Shawshot has, a, has an adopted daughter and he's got like a, a complicated relationship with her but has to sort of struggle with his responsibility to like you know save the world and do all this great stuff but also like he's kind of abandoning her while he's doing that so he's coming to terms with like he is he gonna be a bad father but like a good person for the world or or you know so i i really like exploring dynamics like that but anyway i talked too much um i think i mean you can tell me if you think this discussion was uh was worth it because Sometimes I feel really good about my discussions. This one, I don't know. I don't know. You, I guess you can you can let me know, but don't hurt my feelings. Um, thank you for watching, though, uh, this episode of The Legend of Korra. I really enjoyed it. I really did, even though like I sort of had uh, closer to maybe critiques on the themes of it, but it wasn't really critiques. It was just ways that I would go about it. I still love the, what they're doing here, and I can't wait for more. So I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.